Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Focus Laser Engraver Machine. Model number FE10. I'll first show you how to assemble the engraver and set up the software, then go over my first few attempts at engraving and cutting. There are quite a few steps, so feel free to skip ahead if you just want to see what this machine can do. You'll receive the x-axis frame, left and right frames, front and rear frames, power adapter and power cable, LCD control unit with attached wiring, three support feet, safety goggles, laser module, USB-B data cable, and a bag of hardware and accessories. This includes a micro SD card reader with TF card preloaded with manuals and sample files, an aluminum gauge block, four Allen wrenches, a fixed wrench, three plywood sample blanks, a small brush, zip ties, two timing belts, and various packs of hardware labeled with their steps. The quick start instruction manual is brief but illustrated, and mostly straightforward, but I'll walk you through each step next. To begin assembly, arrange the four rails of the frame like so, with the longer ruled rails on the sides. The left one has a pre-installed stop towards the back, and the number should be increasing as you move from front to back of the machine. The front rail should have the logo facing up, and it should be sitting between the two side rails. The rear frame's channels should be facing front and back, with a flat side on top, also between the two side rails. Next, take a corner connector, paying attention to which side has a groove, and place that side into the rear frame's inside channel. Then slide the other end of the connector into the side frame until the corner is flush and square. Next, take a knurled thumb screw from the hardware pack labeled step 1 and 3, ensuring it has a washer on it, and thread it through the large hole on the side of the side frame. Then tighten with the appropriate Allen wrench. Afterward, tighten the two set screws on the inside of the corner connector. Repeat this on the other side of the rear frame. Before we install the front rail, we'll want to slide on the pre-assembled x-axis frame. Hold the x-axis with the rolled side up and mounting plate facing the front of the machine. The motor should be on the left-hand side. Then carefully place the side rails onto the lower track wheels and lift the frame so that it is parallel with your tabletop allowing the upper wheels on both sides to roll easily onto the upper track simultaneously. Once on the track, the x-axis should roll smoothly along it. Now we can attach the front rail the same way we attached the rear one, using two corner connectors and thumb screws in the sides at the corners, before tightening the set screws on the connectors. Next we'll attach the support feet. Start with the front right corner, using two M516 screws from the pack marked step 4 and tighten with the Allen wrench. At the back, one foot will go in each corner. For the front left corner, the control unit will act as the fourth foot, attaching with the shorter M58 screw on the left-hand side. On the left-hand rail towards the front, you will install an M516 screw with the included plastic isolation sleeve, which will be the forward stop for the Y-axis. To install the timing belt on the X-axis rail, hold it with the teeth facing down. Place it over the silver gear, then feed each side under the wheels and through the rail channel until the belt slips through the slot at the end. Take a T-nut and loosely thread on a short M56 screw and place it into the track on top of the end of the belt. Using a small Allen wrench, rotate the T-nut a quarter turn so that the sides will catch the underside of the rail, then tighten with the appropriate Allen wrench. When anchoring the other side, be sure to pull gently on the belt to ensure that it is tight with a little tension before securing. You will need to perform the same steps for the Y-axis motor's timing belt. Next, we'll attach the laser module using the two thumb screws from the bag marked step 6. Place them through the long channels into the holes on the plate on either side of the laser. Then take the two small M36 screws and fit them with a nylon sleeve. Then slightly lift the laser module so you can thread them into the small holes on the back of the bracket. The wire connector marked Y from the control unit will plug into the Y axis motor, while the one marked X will be plugged into the X axis motor behind the laser. And finally, the small power connector for the laser plugs in on top of the laser. It's a good idea to secure the cables out of the way so they don't interfere while the motors are moving, but this step is optional, and you'll need to make sure to leave enough slack for the motors to reach their full ranges. 
Now we can plug the power cable into the control unit, connect the USB-B cable to the port on top, and plug it into your computer. Make sure the engraver is turned on before continuing. You can find software needed to run the machine on the micro SD card in the folder labeled Softwares. If you're using a Mac, LaserTool is your only option here. Windows users can select from LaserTool, Laser Gerbil, or Lightburn, though the last one is only free to use for 30 days, after which you'll need to purchase a license. Lightburn is also available for Mac and Linux users by downloading the software from their website. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get Lightburn software to detect this machine. However, I did get it to connect with Gerbil. I'm not going to go too in-depth with a software tutorial, but basically once the machine is connected, you'll load in an image, for example an SVG, JPEG, or PNG, then you'll set the parameters for speed and power based on the material you're engraving or cutting. Changing the speed will affect the darkness of the engraving, while changing its power adjusts its depth. These values can be found in the materials profile document found in the manuals folder on the SD card. Once you have the laser positioned over your material, set its height using the metal gauge column by lifting the laser assembly and setting the column under the housing at the back. Secure its position by tightening the thumb screws at the front all the way, then you can remove the gauge. When you're ready to start, just press the play button. Remember to always wear your safety goggles while the laser is on. I wanted to try cutting a circle out of one of the wood blanks, but because the template I chose was a thick bordered circle, the wood started to burn, which wasn't ideal. The unit does have a built-in flame sensor that will stop the machine automatically if it detects a flame. I changed the setting to no fill, but still ended up with two concentric circles for the outline, and at 80% power, the laser didn't go all the way through the 2mm thick wood blank. On my third attempt, I switched to a centerline at 100% power, and that did the trick. The laser cut all the way through the material, and the circle came out of the blank cleanly with a smooth, darkened edge. And I was even able to engrave an image onto it afterwards. Overall, I found the assembly of the machine to be quite straightforward, and you can get it up and running in about 30 minutes. If you're new to laser cutting and engraving, like I am, this is a great machine to get started on, as it's simple to put together, well made, and feels pretty durable. It's got a nice large working area of 400 by 400 millimeters, max speed of 10,000 millimeters per minute, a 10 watt laser output, and 0.06 millimeter laser spot for fine details. I'm pretty excited to play around with this machine some more and try it out on different things, like wood, denim, leather, glass, acrylic, and ceramic. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.